two sides to bigotry and there are no two sides to hatred. And if you choose to march with a flag that symbolizes the slaughter of millions of people, there are no two sides to that. The only way to beat the loud and angry voices of hate is to meet them with louder and more reasonable voices. And that includes you, President Trump. In fact, as president of this great country, you have a moral responsibility to send an unequivocal message that you won't stand for hate and racism. Now, let me help you write your speech here a little bit. As president of the United States and as a Republican, I reject the support of white supremacists. The country that defeated Hitler's armies is no place for Nazi flags. The party of Lincoln won't stand with those who carry the battle flag of the failed Confederacy. Was that that difficult? You see, I told you. <laughs> I have a message to the neo-Nazis and to the white nationalists and to the neo-Confederates. Let me be just as blunt as possible. You heroes are losers. You are supporting a lost cause. And believe me, I know the original Nazis. I was born in Austria in 1947, shortly after the Second World War. And growing up, I was surrounded by broken men. Men who came home from the war filled with shrapnels and guilt. Men who were misled into a losing ideology. And I can tell you that these ghosts that you idolize spent the rest of their lives living in shame. And right now, they're resting in hell. I know that you weren't born with these hateful views. No one is. But the truth is, it's never too late to make the choices to learn and to evolve and to understand that all human beings have equal value. If you say, Arnold, hey, I was just at the march. Don't call me a Nazi. I have nothing to do with Nazis at all. Let me help you. Don't hang around people who carry Nazi flags, give Nazi salutes, or shout Nazi slogans. Go home. Or better yet, tell them that they're wrong to celebrate an ideology that murdered millions of people. And then go home. You're so lucky to live in a country that gives you every right to say horrible things. But think about how you could actually use that power for something good. Those of you who have been silent, you must also evolve. I have learned a long time ago that the only way we can really eliminate hatred is to face it head on. It is not always comfortable, of course, but stereotypes about racism, religion, gender, anything else, they're like cancer. If you had a tumor, you wouldn't quietly hope that it slowly disappears. You would sap the shit out of it with all the chemotherapy and cut it out and try every experimental treatment until it was gone. But this is no different. I mean, this is a difficult time for our country, of course. But I know that if we all have the courage to do something about it and to do the right thing, we come out stronger in the end. I've already donated some money to the Simon Wiesendahl Center, named after a great Nazi hunter who I was lucky to call a friend. And I hope that you will join me by supporting your favorite anti-hate organization. Let's all commit right now to leaving the terrible ghosts of the past in the trash heap of history. That's where they belong. Now share this video if you think that hatred has no place in America. Let's terminate hate.